where the seed was sown right here after a USA fight in Atlantic City, Evander Holyfield and Dwight Cowie. And now, just about six months later, Holyfield is one fight away. The stepping in the ring for a championship fight would become the first Olympian from 1984 to fight for a championship. And there is his trainer, Lou Duva, as we are just about ready. As you can see, Holyfield has his fight face on. For the introductions of our main event, let's go to ring announcer Bobby Stevens. Ladies and gentlemen, our main event, 10 rounds in the cruiserweight division. Our referee for this bout, Pete Jerusso. Introducing first in the blue corner, wearing the blue trunks with the white trim, weighing it at 188 and a quarter pounds, from Cleveland, Ohio, with a professional record of 18 wins, 11 losses, 15 knockouts. Ladies and gentlemen, say hello to Terry Mims. Mims. And in the red corner, wearing the white trunks with the red trim, weighing in at 190 pounds, from Atlanta, Georgia, with a professional record of 10 wins, no losses, seven knockouts. Ladies and gentlemen, the ever popular Avenda Real Deal Holyfield. Holyfield. Are you the new young man of a boxing we used to have before? No. Right. We go by the round system here, young fellow. You can move it around for a low blow, unsportsmanlike combat. Is that clear? Now in the clinches, you can work, and I expect you to work. And when I say break, I want a good, clean break. Now, this is a tough game of not being dirty, and I'm not going to put up with any dirty work. You hear? So shake hands and come out fighting. And the Taylor tape, 10 years difference in age, both at 6 1. Holyfield, 190. Mims, 188 and a quarter, and you see the reach advantage of Holyfield but the Randy's reach gives the advantage to Mims. Mims has very long arms but Holyfield with that wide back. Holyfield 10-0, seven knockouts. He has knocked out his last five opponents and Mims the veteran who admits to the age of 33 has a record of 18 and 11 with 15 knockouts. And he, for his entire career, has been fighting heavyweight opponents, although he is really a cruiserweight or a light heavyweight. So he has uh, basically been out of position for his whole professional career, fighting the likes of Tex Cobb, Michael Dokes, Carl the Truth Williams. And now he is in to try to give a test to Evander Holyfield. But Mims, you got to realize for him, this is his shot to finally get some recognition. You talk about comeback stories. Terry Mims is one of those comeback stories. In May of 1980, he was riding a motorcycle. He was hit by a car. He suffered a fractured spine, pelvis, a broken tailbone. At first, they didn't think he'd live. Then they said he'd never walk again. And here he is fighting a main event tonight. And he mentioned to uh, say hello to uh, Moses Rodor. Leonard Adams, his good friend, who was there to, to help uh, save his life that night. Say hello to... Leonard Adams of the main post office in Cleveland. One of the reasons that Mims is here to tell the tale and to step in the ring with Evander Holyfield. Holyfield five straight knockouts. And he must get by Terry Mims tonight. And if he does, a date is set up for July 12th against Dwight Cowie. And we notice that Cowie is not here tonight watching on. Now he has been working out here in Louisiana and some fights we've been here he has been at ringside. You know, perhaps he is tuned in and watching his opponent in his next fight. And it is uh, Evander Holyfield with the left hand. Holyfield is now ranked number three by the WBA, number four by the IBF, and number five by the WBC. Out of Mims, 15 knockouts. Seven have come in the first round when he has fought cruiserweights. There was that stiff jab of Holyfield, which is rapidly turning into one of the best in boxing in any division. 
Holyfield is all offense, all over his opponent, and here closing in on Mims in the corner. Holyfield, remember, a gold medalist did not, a, a medal did not win the gold in the Olympics, but a bronze medal, very controversial. He was uh, disqualified in the semifinal round when he was hitting on the break. Very much uh, as you watch that fight, the victor, but was disqualified in the fight and had to settle for the bronze. And that uh, certainly also has been part of the inspiration of Holyfield. He has become the first Olympian, or uh, appears to be, that will get a title fight. Many people feel he's just one of the best all around of the Olympians. That's some pressure is just being put on it. There's no swelling there. He got hit with a few jabs, but that's preventive medicine right there. As the man outside the ring, George Benton whispers in his ear, and Ace Murata, the cut man, just applies the ice, and Captain Lou Duva in front of him, a little refresher. One of the reasons he's uh, ready for a title fight is because he is fighting in the cruiserweight division. He has had only 10 professional fights. He's won them all, but Lou Duva feels that he is ready for Howie. And there you see face to face Lou Duva, who has handled many champions, as uh, many of the Olympians in his stable. And right now, this could be the man from the 1984 Olympics who could be wearing the gold as a pro, the first of the 84 Olympians. I believe that Pernell Whitaker, the lightweight on the team, was making the most progress, but then he suffered a fractured foot, came back from that, and in his comeback fight suffered a fractured hand. So his progress has been slowed down. He'll be back in action very soon. Right now, Mark Freeland has really stepped on the gas, and he's rated in the top 10 in the welterweight division. And what a fight he has coming up against a guy you've seen so many times here on USA, the Matador, John Manduga, the stablemate of uh, Mr. Mugabe. And that shows you the progress of all these Olympians. Another great matchup. Should be a very good fight. 24 0 now, I believe it is, for Mandubin. And you see the left hand giving Holyfield just a slight bit of problem because he's the same size as Mims. And Mims has that longer jab. And it's, it's not that he's hurting Holyfield with it, he's just upsetting him a little bit. Some good work, though, as Holyfield's getting in. And he learns every time he steps in the ring. And that's one reason also he's fighting a veteran. The likes of Terry Mims trying to learn a few of the little tricks that I'm sure he feels he'll be seeing against uh, Dwight Cowie. Oh, Cowie much shorter. About five foot seven. He comes in with that crab-like defense holding the right hand up by his left ear, dragging that right foot behind him. Holyfield said he's got some left hooks and some uppercuts for him. Mims was 71-2 in his fine amateur career, including a victory over one Tony Tubbs. And one of the highlights for Mims growing up in Cleveland, there is Tyrell Biggs, pretty good friend of Evander Holyfield, as he looks on, continues to nurse his collarbone. Olympic super heavyweight champion is now a stablemate. Biggs has not stepped in the ring since his victory over Jeff Sims when he broke the collarbone and so courageously went on for the victory. Lou Duva not allowing him in the ring for another two weeks. What a body shot with the left hook that was. More or less it went unnoticed, but Mims certainly felt it. Second round action, our main event scheduled for 10. As Evander Holyfield is working on a string of five consecutive knockouts, seven in his last eight fights. He is 10-0 with seven KOs. 20 seconds to go in the second round. B.G. Russo, the third man in the room. And Mims trying to tie up Holyfield. There's a quick left to the head. side of New Orleans. It's Evander Holyfield who is this fight away from a title shot going up against 
The veteran Terry Mims out of Cleveland, Ohio. Holyfield hails from Atlanta. And you can see that experience that Mims has. He just is causing Holyfield to have a lot of problems as he paws out with the left hand, as he ties him up on the inside. And gets away from the lunge and left of Holyfield. Holyfield not really going after his man as if this is a title fight. I'm sure if he, had, if he hurts Kyle Wee like that, he'll be after him. He's got a lot of rounds in front of him. That was a shove down. The legs of Mims are already starting to go. He's taking some wicked body shots. And now we're doing some work on his gloves. Some tape coming off. P.G. Rizzo checking the gloves of Holyfield. Mims had his biggest victory in January of 1980 when he went over to Italy and took on heavyweight contender Alfio Righetti, rated number six in the world at that time. And he beat Righetti. When he came back to the United States, he really figured that the world ratings organizations, the WBA, the WBC, take notice of him. The thing is, they never did. And he became a very bitter man. He felt that the boxing establishment had something against him. And quite frankly, I don't know what it was. They just never gave him his due. I think he would agree with you. He feels also he never really was a heavyweight. And uh, the only fights that he could get were in the heavyweight division. Thought that the lighter weights, the cruisers, and perhaps the light heavyweights not interested to take him on. There's a right by Holyfield that slips in. A great combination. He got three, four punches in there. Here in the third round, Holyfield coming on against Terry Mims. Holyfield only fighting at about 75%, I'd say, tonight. Not turning on the combinations the way he normally does. Seems as if he's content that he wants to get some rounds of work in, as at times he's trying to toy with Mims. And it's very bad to do that, because the two of those guys could step into a clinch. The heads can crack around, and Holyfield will step back with a cut. And there goes that summer title fight against Kyle Wee. In the ring right now, Holyfield is fighting Mims, but thinking Kawi. 25 seconds left in the third round. I'm sure that's what Holyfield has in his mind now. A little bit of Kawi, and a little bit of Mims. Under 15 seconds in the third round. Holyfield's last two fights have gone a combined total of five. And a right again on Mims as he chases him. Top of the fourth round against Terry Mims. Mims with a record of 18-11. Holyfield charging his opponent. Well, Captain Lou Duva told Holyfield at this point, come on, get this guy out of there. We'll see if he can do it. What brain trust around Holyfield is Lou Duva, Ace Murata, one of the best cut men in the business, George Benton, the trainer, Tommy Brooks. Got the king of consultants in there, Shelly Finkel, and his manager is Kenny Sanders. Ken Sanders, you know, he's a car ownership. He has a dealership down in Atlanta, Ken Sanders Buicks, and he's bringing Holyfield in to teach him the whole business. And very soon, Holyfield will have his own dealership. Well, he's certainly dealing it out now in these last two rounds to Terry Mims. Holyfield coming out of the Olympics. Sanders, one of the most beautiful businessmen who have come out to take over and manage some fighters. A lot of times you hear the stories of the managers robbing from the fighter. This is a relationship that has just grown from the amateur days of Holyfield. Well, he's uh, put himself in the right hands. Holyfield, coming out of the Olympics, uh, one of the most popular and publicized of the fighters, even though he didn't win the goal. Many of the fans in the U.S. thought, of course, he was robbed when he was disqualified in his uh, fight with Kevin Barry of New Zealand in the semifinals. And they let loose with a ferocious left hook to the head, which knocked Barry out cold, but the, the referee disqualified him, saying that he hit on the break. Not allowed in amateur fighting. Holyfield has uh, continued to show that aggressiveness as a pro. It should be quite an interesting fight against Kyle Wee. It really has a fighting style, nothing like the fighting style you're seeing in Mims. Short, choppy punches by Holyfield as Mims now coming back here in the fourth round showing some spark, the uppercut from the right by Mims. Mims wobbly on his legs, Holyfield pushing him back and 
Mims staggering as he backs up. He's got to be having on his mind his favorite person in the world, five-year-old daughter, Paris Ilan. And that is probably what's keeping him on his feet. And that is what is keeping him in the ring at the age of 33. As Mims is getting tired here in the closing 20 seconds of the fourth round. Now at the weigh-in today, Mims asked Holyfield for an autograph. And then when he also asked you <laughs> for an autograph, started to think. So four rounds are down and our main event scheduled for ten. LPGA Golf will come your way Saturday, June 7th, and Sunday, June 8th, when USA will bring you the 1986 McDonald's Championship Women's Golf Tournament live from the White Manor Country Club in Malvern, Pennsylvania. Saturday's coverage begins at 3.30 Eastern Time with third round action, and the final round coverage begins at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. LPGA Golf live in June on USA. Terry Mims surviving through four rounds, and here's some of the punishment that he took in the last round and uh, even dished out some. He is trying his hardest, but he's in against one of the top young cruiserweights on this planet. And that is Evander Holyfield coming out for the fifth round. Holyfield stepping into the ring. Confident young man, never felt that his July plans uh, would be in jeopardy against Mims. Those plans, July 12th, with Dwight Cowie for the championship. WBA style cruiserweight division. The cruiserweight division is an interesting division. It should have been around years ago. I think Floyd Patterson, instead of being a heavyweight champion, he only fought at around 190, 95 pounds. He easily would have been a cruiserweight champ. But today, there's not all that much talent. Once you get past the Dwight Cowies, Leroy Murphys, Carlos De Leon's, and perhaps the Olympian Henry Tillman, the heavyweight champ in the Olympics, that's about it. And the right uppercut as Mims goes down, followed by Holyfield. Well, this hard ring has claimed another victim because that was a double knockout. A hard shot sent him down, and as he went down, he hit the floor so hard, blood pouring from the nose. There's no way. Evander Holyfield is a perfect 11-0 as he records his sixth straight knockout, wearing Mims down in the third and fourth round and then striking viciously with a right there in the fifth as Mims crashed to the canvas, the blood pouring from his nose, and now he is very slowly being helped to his feet. Quickly goes over to embrace Evander Holyfield and wishes him well in his next endeavor, which will be for the WBA Cruiserweight title against Dwight Mohamed Kawi. This is how it ended in the fifth round. Holyfield with the uppercut in close, holding on, and there is the right uppercut again, Timber. From a different angle, it was two uppercuts. That's the setup by Holyfield. An uppercut of his own by Mims left him wide open. And almost a delayed reaction. And down he went as they get tangled up. Holyfield falling over his fallen victim. So it turns out to be a nice workout for Holyfield. And uh, Mims, who has seen uh, just about them all, now congratulating. Holyfield and wishing him well. We'll get the official time on this uh, fifth round shortly. As Terry Mims now, certainly quickly to his senses, although it appeared as if he may have been out for several seconds, suffering his 12th defeat in 30 fights. The 33-year-old veteran coming in. Perhaps uh, showing Holyfield inside some of the tricks of the trade that he might uh, contend with against uh, Kawi in July. 
And Holyfield. Here's the time. Ladies and gentlemen, in one minute and 12 seconds of the fifth round, the winner by a knockout and still undefeated, Avenda Real Deal, Holyfield. Holyfield right here, ladies and gentlemen. Well, we'll see the Real Deal in another couple of months. So now the sights are set. Everybody is out of the way. A quick rise for the former Olympian, Evander Holyfield. 11 professional fights, 11 victories, 8 by knockouts, and he is now ready for a championship fight. And we will now hear the words from Evander Holyfield, trainer Lou Dufa, stepping in uh, alongside of Randy Gordon, and now let's go into the ring. Well, the man is title-bound. He did it tonight, got the tune-up out of the way, and now he's on his way to a title fight against Dwight Cowie. That should be a lot tougher than the one tonight. You look like you were carrying him for a while, will you? We, uh, the guy with pressure, man, I was trying to counter, trying to slip, slip some jab, work on my defense a little bit, and not actually go out and just try to explode, trying to see how fast I can knock a guy out. I try to go in for the work. If I can take him, I'll take him, but really, he, he had pretty good defense, and he slipped a lot of my jabs and everything. You're about a month and a half away from one of the most dangerous fighters to come along in years, the short, powerful, explosive Dwight Muhammad Kawe. How will you fight him? Well... I would go out there and fight him. I would fight him in the center range, try to keep him on the end of the jab, and try to work my body shots on him. You know he's going to be right on top of you. Oh, yeah, I knew that. And uh, that's the reason I'm going to go get down to business and train real hard like i never trained before. But I'm going to be ready. I'm not expecting that easy. The man is the champ, and I want to prove that I'm better. So I had to go out there and give it all my best and go out there and defeat this guy. Ken Sanders, you're new to the business. You're managing this guy, the first fighter you've ever worked with. What makes him so special? Well, he's a great person to start with, and uh, he's also my best friend. What does he have as a fighter that makes him special, aside being a friend? Well, he's got a great heart. He trains real hard. He's real loyal, and he's going to be a world champion. Captain Lou Duba, your birthday today. What a present it was from Evander Holyfield, because now you get to manage perhaps another champion. Well, uh, Real Deal said he was going to give me a birthday present tonight, and he gave me a birthday present tonight. But uh, all I can tell you is one thing, Randy. He will stop. You hear what I tell you? He will stop. Uh, Kwawe. You can bet on this here. Anything he can do, Evander can do better. He's stronger. You're going to see one hell of a fight over there, but I'll tell you something. To give our battle plan away, it wouldn't be just the right thing to do at this point. But he'll come out with a battle plan. He's going to make the fight so easy out there. Kwawe better be ready because he is going to be his last fight. Lou, you've been second guessed before. A lot of people say you're throwing Holyfield into a title fight, perhaps before he's ready true assessment? Listen, uh, everybody's got to write the second guess, you know, but I've been pretty fortunate. So far, I haven't been wrong. Evander, you had a chance to perhaps wait a few more months. Would you like to take a few months reprieve? What, what do you want, Conway, right now? Well, I want it right now. Um, I let my, my trainers and that, my trainers will make the decision on that. They they know how I work out in the gym. They watch me and they, uh, they look at me very carefully and go over me very carefully. I don't think they were putting me in a situation I couldn't handle. And I feel like if in a man, uh, comes in the ring. I feel like I can beat him. If, uh, I feel like I couldn't beat him. I wouldn't show. I wasn't even uh, going to ring to fight. Uh, you had Olympic teammate and stablemate now, Tyrell Biggs at ringside. Mark Breland is on his way up in the welterweight division. Pernell Whitaker is on his way up in the lightweight division. Do you feel any jealousy at times with the other guys as they get some publicity? No, I don't feel any jealousy at all. I think each and, each and every one of us deserve every little bit of attention we get. And, and our boxing is an individual sport. If you want some attention, you got to get in there and perform. And so each and every one get their chance. So when you get the opportunity, you have to take advantage of it. I've been hearing talk that should you beat Howie, you're looking at Michael Spinks. Could that be true? Yes, that could be true. Uh, uh, matter of fact, it is true. My manager and my trainers and stuff, they're working at uh, uh, one, uh, first thing I take the first step first to beat Howie. Field round. Final.